Good morning children. Welcome to Momita ma'am's class. Today we would be discussing the chapter the first chapter of your book and it is The Summer of the Beautiful White Horse. It is written by William Saroyan. Now this story is about now first of all we would deal with the chapter. What does the chapter mean? the summer of the beautiful white horse it means the chapter actually describes an incident which happened in the summer season and the incident is regarding a beautiful white horse so the narrator wants to share his experience of having a ride on a beautiful white horse during the summer season so the whole chapter deals with the narrator's experience of uh, riding a horse uh, during the summer season now this story the summer of the beautiful white horse deals with two poor armenian boy who belong to a tribe whose hallmarks are trust and honesty that is now the story is about two boys armenian boys armenia as you know is a landlocked country situated somewhere very close to the black sea and the caspian sea now it is a story about the two children called aram and murad Murad is Aram's cousin. Now the whole story deals with Aram and his cousin Murad. Both of them are children, and their experience with a beautiful white horse during a summer season. Now they belong to Garulanian tribe, and the speciality, the benchmark of the, this tribe is trust and honesty. That is, these people are very trustworthy and very very honest. Now let's begin the chapter now. One day back there in the in the good old days when I was 9 and the world was full of very imaginable kind of magnificence and life was still a delightful and mysterious dream. My cousin Murad who was considered crazy by everybody who knew him except me came to my house at 4 in the morning and woke me up. tapping on the window of my room now the narrator is still in his childhood so life for him is good he was just 9 years old and the world was still full of imagination he was he yet had not uh, he has not yet faced the hardships of life so for him life is full of imaginable kind of magnificence life is splendid life is magnificent for him and life was still a delightful and mysterious dream so this is something common with every children every child my cousin murad when he was just a child he was 9 years old life was full of dream mystery and delight his cousin murad who was considered to be a crazy person by everyone in the family except me why because he held murad in high esteem murad was his friend and he did not want to consider him to be crazy he came to his house at 4 in the morning and woke me up tapping on the early in the morning at around 4 murad came and tapped at the window of his room aram he said i jumped out of the bed and looked out of the window i couldn't believe what i saw now what did he see it was not yet morning but it was summer now see it was summer and the day had just broken out and there was light enough for him to see and feel and be sure that he wasn't dreaming right my cousin murad was sitting on a beautiful white horse and he realized it very well that it was not his dream i stuck my head out of the window and rubbed my eyes yes he said in armenian it is a horse you are not dreaming now murad understood his mind he read his mind murad said that he was not dreaming he was correct murad was in reality 
riding on a horse. Make it quick if you want to ride. I knew my cousin Murad enjoyed being alive more than anybody else who had ever fallen into the world by mistake. But this was more than even I could believe. Now he knew it very well. Murad was a very lively person and he, and he loved being alive more than anybody else in the world. And his uh, Adam's thought about life is people fall into this world by mistake to suffer misery. But Murad was one such person who does not feel, uh, who, who feels extremely happy to be born on this earth. He was, he was a very, uh, he, he loved living his life to full extent. But he couldn't believe this. How was it possible that Murad could ever get a horse in the first place? Now, why could he th why why did he think that it was not possible because in the first place my earliest memories had been memories of horses now the narrator had been extremely fond of horses he always wanted uh, to ride a horse and my first longings had been longings to ride this was the wonderful part and in the this was the wonderful part he always wanted to ride a horse but the second thing is that they were poor now it is not possible for them to buy a horse. Their poverty would not permit them to believe or, or to buy get a horse. So it did not also permit him to believe what he saw. We were poor. We had no money. Our whole n tribe was poverty stricken. Every branch of the Garolanian tribe was living in the most amazing po poverty. Now here we get to know about the tribe. Right? They belong to the Garolanian tribe. Every branch of the Garolanian tribe was living in the most amazing and comical poverty. They say that their poverty is comical. People laugh about their poverty. Nobody could understand where we could ever go, where we ever got money enough to keep us with food in our bellies. Now they were so poor that it was not possible for him to for them to manage the substance. The, the most important thing in life that is food. It was very difficult for them to, to, to manage the bare necessities of life. Not even the old men of uh, the family. Most important of all, though we were famous for our honesty, we had been famous for our honesty for something like 11 centuries. Now, he says that they have been famous for their honesties, for honesty for 11 centuries. They are a very old tribe and people respect them for their honesty. Even when we had been the wealthiest family in what we like to think was the world. Now, once upon a time, they were, they, they, they had been a very wealthy tribe. But even then, they were honest. So honesty was the first and foremost speciality of this tribe. We were proud first, honest next. And after that, we believed in right and wrong. So this was their criteria. They were very proud of their being. Then they were honest. And then, after that, they believed in right and wrong. None of us would take advantage of anybody in the world, let alone steal. Now here is the point. So here we understand why Aram thought that it cannot be more than a dream. Because they were extremely poor. It was uh, difficult for them to manage Four, two square meals in a day. How could they buy a horse? And moreover, they were very, very trustworthy and honest. Honesty was the benchmark of their tribe. They can never ever steal. So it was also not possible that Murad would, would steal the horse. Consequently, even though I could see the horse so magnificent, he saw the horse was extremely magnificent. I could hear it breathing, so exciting. I couldn't believe the horse had anything to do with my cousin Murad or with me or with any one of the family members of our family asleep or awake because I knew my cousin Murad couldn't have brought the horse and if he couldn't have brought it, bought it, he must have stolen and I refused to believe that he had stolen. 
So, Aram thought that Murad couldn't own the horse, he couldn't buy the horse. That means he must have stolen it. But Murad thought, but, but Murad refused to believe, sorry, but Aram refused to believe that Murad could steal a horse. It was against the the it was against the honesty which was followed by their tribe very strictly no member of the gaulanian tribe could be a thief i started i stared first at my cousin and then at the horse there was a pious stillness and humor in each of them which on the one delighted me and on the other frightened me pious pure holy pure or holy there was a stillness in both of them both of them refers to the horse and murad there was a pure or holy stillness and also there was humor humor means fun amazement in each of them which one on one hand delighted me he was happy to see this expression of piousness and humor and on the other it also frightened him because he couldn't understand how could Murad ever get hold of this horse. Murad, I said, where did you steal this horse? Now he asked, straightforward he asked Murad if he had stolen the horse. But Murad avoided the question and asked and said him, leap out of the window, he said, if you want to ride. It was true then, he had stolen. Now, since he avoided giving any direct answer, since he did not protest against the allegation, it proved that Murad had actually stolen the horse. There was no question about it. He had come to invite me to ride or not, as I chose. Now, it was very clear that Murad had actually stolen the horse and had now um, come to invite Aram to take a ride or not. Well, it seemed to me stealing a horse for a ride was not the same thing as stealing something else, such as money. For all I knew, maybe it wasn't stealing at all. Now, he said that he, he tried to defend this action because he was crazy about horse and he said that stealing a horse is not like stealing money or any other possession. Right. It was something different. He tried to reason with him, himself. If you were crazy about a horse, the way my cousin Murad and I were, it wasn't stealing. It wouldn't become stealing until we offered to sell the horse, which of course I knew we would never do. Now he said that unless and until we are selling the horse, that means we are not stealing. All these things, why, why was he saying all these things? Because actually he was trying to defend their action. He knew that Murad had stolen the horse, which was against the custom, which was against the tradition of their um, of, of their tribe, which was against the honesty and integrity of Galanian tribe. So he he wants to he wanted to justify this action of Murad. Let me put on some clothes. I said, all right. He said, but hurry. I leaped into my clothes. He jumped into his clothes. This shows the sentence speaks how how quickly he wore his dress. I jumped down to the yard from the window and leaped up onto the horse behind my cousin Murad. So he jumped behind Murad. The, that year we lived in the edge of the town on Walnut Avenue. Behind our house was the country, vineyards, orchards, irrigation ditches and country roads. Now this tells us about the setting of the story. They lived on the edge of the town and on, that is on the Walnut Avenue and behind their house they had a very nice natural uh, I mean place. It was full of vineyards, orchards, irrigation ditches and country road. Vineyards refer to a yard or a garden full of vine or creeping plant. It can be grapevine or any other vine. In less than three minutes we were on Olive Avenue and then the horses began to trot. The air was new and lovely to breathe. 
The feel of the horse running was wonderful. My cousin Murad, who was considered one of the craziest members of the family, began to sing. I mean, he began to roar. Actually, his singing was equivalent to roaring. He was also crazy, extremely crazy boy. So he started roaring. Actually, singing, but his song was more than his song. Actually, was I mean, was very similar to roaring. Very every family has a crazy streak in it somewhere. And my cousin Murad was considered the natural descendant of uh, the crazy streak in our tribe. Before him was our uncle Khosrow, an enormous man with a powerful head of black hair and the largest mustang. Musta in the San jo- Joaquin Valley, a man so furious in temper, so irritable, so impatient that he stopped anyone from talking by roaring. It's no harm, pay no attention to it. Now, this is another speciality of the Garolanian tribe. They believed that every person had two fathers. One is the biological father and one is the spiritual father. Now, since Murad was a very crazy person. His father was actually Zorab. He was a very natural and normal man. But since he was very similar in his craziness to Uncle Koshram, he was considered to be the natural descendant of Uncle Koshram. Now, Uncle Koshram was a huge man with powerful head of black hair. His hair head was full of black hair and he had the largest moustache in San Joaquin Valley. And he was a man so furious in temper and so irritable and so impatient that he he was irritable, impatient and he would stop anyone by roaring. It's no harm, pay no attention to it. Now this was something, a dialogue he would say to every occasion. No matter, even if a person is dying, he would say, it's no matter, pay no attention to it. Now... We are going now we are going to read the most hilarious part of the story. Now once it happened so that that, uh, that his own son Arak running eight blocks, his son Arak ran eight blocks to the barber's shop where Uncle Koshov was having his moustache trimmed. Now he went there to tell him that their house was on fire. But this man, he sat up on the chair and roared. What did he say? It's no harm, pay no attention to it. Even after knowing that the house was on fire, he said the same thing. It's no harm, pay no attention to it. The barber said, but the boy says your house is on fire. Again, Koshrav roared. Enough, it's no harm, I say. Now, do you understand what kind of mad person he is? My cousin Murad was considered the natural descendant of this man. Because of his craziness, he was considered to be the natural descendant of Uncle Koshrov. Although Murad's father was Zorab, who was practical and nothing else. That's how it was in our tribe. A man could be the father of his son's flesh, but that did not mean that he was also the father of his spirit. Right. So the spiritual father, father of the spirit would be a person who, whose nature and characteristics would be very similar to that person. The distribution of various kinds of spirit of our tribe had been from the very beginning capricious and vagrant. Now say that the spirit, who would possess what kind of spirit? This distribution had been very capricious. Capricious means moody that does not abide by any rule or regulation capricious vagrant all means the same they mean that something very whimsical that has that do not that that does not abide by any rule any regulation we wrote and my cousin Murad sang for all anybody knew we were still in the old country where at least according to some of our neighbors we belonged now, they have been, they, they, they no longer possess their own land. But some neighbors say that the land belonged to them. They have been ousted from their land. We let the horse run as long as it felt like running. 
we let the horse run as long as it felt like running so they allowed the horse to run at last my cousin murad said get down i want to ride alone now murad as we know that he had already stolen the horse long time back so he the horse was quite accustomed with him and he allowed murad to ride and murad said that he would be riding alone will you let me ride alone now who is saying this aram right now aram is telling asking if he would also be allowed to ride alone on the horseback that's up to the horse my cousin said get down now, now murad said that uh, that depends on the horse if the horse allows then fine he can ride the horse will the horse will let me ride i said we shall see he said don't forget that i have a way with the horse well i said any way you have with the horse i also have i i have also now murad said now this is the crazy streak in murad i have a way with a horse like we have seen that uncle coach rob uh, he had a habit of saying it does not matter um uh, like uncle koshrob had a habit of had a habit, habit of saying it doesn't harm pay no attention to it similarly murad also has a habit of saying this i have a way with a horse he will, in the in the later part of the story we will see that every time he keeps on saying that he have a way with everyone he has a way with a horse with a farmer with a dog he has a way with everyone he has a special way he he claims that well his i said any way you have with horse i also have for the sake of your safety he said let us hope so get down all right i said but remember you have got to let me try to ride down, ride alone now aram said that okay, aram aram agreed to get down the horse but he also said that murad has to allow him to ride on the horse alone i got down and my cousin murad kicked his heels into the horse and shouted wazir run now wazir right this is now he has named the horse to be wazir this is the name given by murad so he asked the horse to run the horse stood on its hind legs snorted and bursted burst into a fury of speed that was the loveliest now snorted means the sound made by the horse he stood on his hind legs hind means back leg back uh, not the front legs and then he burst into a fury he he rode with a great speed and it was the loveliest of everything My cousin Murad raced the horse across a field of dry grass into an irrigation ditch, crossed the ditch on the horse, and five minutes later returned dripping wet. So the horse took him to an irrigation ditch. Did you know a small pit kind of thing where water is stored? Now they ran ran across the irrigation ditch, and when after five minutes, when they returned, they were dripping wet. Water dripped out from their body. the sun was coming out coming up now it is my turn to ride i said my cousin murad got off the horse right he said now the sun was he was being called at 4 am and now the sun was about to rise and um, aram aram said aram uh, was obstinate he said that he wanted to ride he asked murad to go get off the horse right he said i leaped to the back of the horse and for a moment knew the most awful fear imaginable now aram it was aram's first ride he was very scared he he decided uh, to ride on the horse but once uh, when the ride start once when the ride started he was extremely scared he he knew for the moment he knew the fear which was most awful fear that he could imagine the horse did not move the first thing is the horse did not move when murad instructed him to kick into the muscle he did that he kicked into the muscle of the horse and the horse started running what are you waiting for we have to take him back before everybody in the world is up and about now he says that what are you waiting for kick into its muscle i kicked into the muscles of the horse once again it reared and snorted and began to run i didn't know what to do he was scared he was a small child just uh, 11 i believe so the horse started running i did not know what to do instead of running across the field to the irrigation ditch the horse ran down the um, the road to the vineyard of dikran halabian now 
instead of running taking him towards the irrigation ditch the horse ran on a different way it ran across it ran into the vineyard of a farmer named Dikran Halabian where it began to leap over vines now there were vines it started jumping over vines one after another then it continued running my cousin Murad came okay now the horse leaped over seven vines and finally threw Aram out of from, from its back when Aram fell down from the horse back it started running my cousin Murad came running down the road I'm not worried about you you shouted we've got to get that horse you go this way and I'll go this way if you come upon him be kindly I'll be near now Murad openly said that he is not concerned about Aram though he had fallen he said that he was concerned about he was concerned only about the horse right and so it was decided that both of them would take two different ways and would try to get the horse i continued down the road and my cousin murad went across the field towards the irrigate, irrigation ditch both of them went to two different direction aram went towards the road and murad went to went across the field towards the irrigation ditch i it took him half an hour to find the horse and bring him back after half an hour Murad finally was able to bring the horse back. All right, he said, jump on. The whole world is awake now. What will we do? I said. He said that, all right, jump upon the horse. Now, Aram was scared. He said that, what are they going to do now? Now, uh, it was not possible for them to return the horse because everyone was awakened. He was concerned. He was scared. Well, he said, we'll either take him back or hide him until tomorrow morning. Aram, but Aram was very confident. He said that they are going to hide him or take him back. Take him back or hide him until the next day morning. He didn't sound worried and I knew he'd hide him and not take him back. The way he sounded, the, the confidence in his voice made Aram realize that at any cost he was not going to return the horse and definitely he was going to hide it for the time being. Where, where will we hide him? I said. Now Aram said that where they are going to hide him. Uh, Murad said that I know a place. Now these things indicate that he has already have a good plan about what to do with the horse or maybe he was accustomed to hide the horse since a long time. The way he sounded, the confidence he had in his voice even after the fact that everyone was awakened and now he would not be able to return the horse to its owner. It showed that definitely uh, he had stolen the horse uh, way back. How long did you steal this horse? I said. Now, this made Aram feel, uh, I mean, this made Aram, made Aram doubt Murad's uh, intention. He said that, how long did you steal this horse? It suddenly dawned on me that he had been taking these early morning rides for some time and had come for me this morning only because he knew how much I longed to ride. He realized that Murad had come with the horse because now he had because Murad know, knew it very well that Aram longed to have a ride on the horse. But before that, the, before the same day, he had been taking this ride since a long, long time. Now Murad said, "Who said anything about stealing a horse?" He said. Anyhow, I said. How long did you now? Aram was scared when he said, uh, "How long did you st uh, steal this horse?" Murad said uh, in a angry tone, "That who is asking me about? Who said anything about stealing? What do you mean by stealing?" Now Aram was also scared. Aram did not want to uh, lose the chance of riding the horse. He did not want to offend him at any cost. So he said that, um, no, I just wanted to know how long um, did you begin to ride, uh, take this morning rides. Not until this morning, he said, are you telling the truth? I said, now again he lied to Adam. He said that, yes, definitely only this morning. Now Adam said, are you telling the truth? Of course not, he said, but if we, were, if we are fi found out, that's what you ought to say. I don't want both of us to be liars. All you know is that we started writing this morning. Now when Aram asked him if he was telling the truth that they had, he had been taking ride, uh, he took ride only this morning, he found the horse only this morning, Aram openly admit 
uh, openly admitted that uh, he had not been telling the truth. But at the same time, he also said that he does not want both of them to lie. So he said that you know uh, that I have started taking this ride only today morning. There is no need, he, he said that there is no need of, for Aram to know more than that. Because he does not want Aram to lie. All right, I said. He walked the horse quietly to the barn of a deserted vineyard, which at one time had been the pride of a farmer named Fet Vagian. Now, very confidently, he walked across the deserted. Deserted means left away, lonely, solitary, where no one goes now. Uh, it is left empty. So the horse was taken to the deserted vineyard of Fedvagian. One, once upon a time, it was the pride of a farmer, of, of the farmer Fedvagian. But now it has been, it is barren, it is deserted. There were some oaks and dry alpha alpha in the barn. Now, as you know, horse love eating, uh, horses love eating uh, oats and alpha alpha. So there was sufficient food in the barn. So the horse was also happy. We began walking home. It wasn't easy, he said, to get the horse to behave so nicely. At first it wanted to run wild, but as I have told you, I have a way with the horse. I can get it to want to do anything I want it to do. Now he said that, you know, Aram, it's not very easy to make anyone do whatever you wish. But he also said that, you know, I have a special way with the horse. And so I, it was easy for me to make the horse uh, do whatever I want, wanted it to do. Horses understand me. How do you do it? I said. Now this is something like an elder brother. I know everything. I'm the big brother kind of thing. Right. Now he said that uh, Aram, Aram was impressed. He said, how do you do it? I said. I have an understanding with the horse, he said. Yes, but what sort of, of an understanding? I said. A simple and honest one, he said. Well, I said, I wish I knew how to reach an understanding like that with a horse. Now, Aram was imp impressed. He wanted to know what sort of understanding does Murad have with uh, the horse. Now, he also wanted to have that sort of understanding. And Murad said that he had an honest understanding with the horse, simple and honest one. Now, when he said that he also want, wanted to reach uh, to an un understanding uh, with, with a horse like that, as, as that of Murad, Murad said that he was still a small boy, he said. When you will get to be 13, you will know how to do it. Now, he said that when you will grow up like me, and what is the age of understanding? His age, Murad's own age. He said that when he will be 13, he would be able to understand the ways of a horse. I went home and ate a hearty breakfast. They were very, he was very happy. So he had a very hearty breakfast. And that afternoon, my uncle Koshrov came to our house for coffee and cigarette. He had now Koshrov. As you know, who was Koshrov? Koshrov was considered to be the spiritual father of uh, Murad. Because his nature uh, matches with his nature had a had a great similarity with those of Murad. So according to the custom of the Garolanian tribe, Murad was considered to be the natural descendant of Khosrow. Now He was also a crazy person, just as Murad was. He sat in the parlor, sipping and smoking and remembering the old country. Then another visitor arrived. Now he was, he, he was sitting in the parlor. He was having a sip of coffee and then he was smoking. And he was also remembering the old, uh, old um, custom of the uh, country. And then another visitor arrived. Who was this visitor? He was John By Byro. Now this John Byro is the owner of the horse. He was an Assyrian. They are Armenian, right? But John Byro was an Assyrian. That is, he used to live in Assyria. And he was, he came there out of loneliness, had learned to speak Armenian. Now, because he was lonely, there was no one he could talk with in his own language. He had learned Armenian. And now he could talk with the, uh, with the Garolanian tribe because he has learned their language. My mother brought a lonely, the lonely visitor coffee and tobacco and he rolled a cigarette and sipped and smoked. And then at last, sighing. Sadly, he said, my white horse, which was stolen last month, is still gone. I cannot understand it. 
now which it is revealed now that john byro had lost uh, lost his horse a month back and coach and uh, murad had been taking a ride on the horse for since since a whole month right now he said that it was stolen a month back and still now he has not been able to find it my uncle koshro became very irritated and shouted it's no harm what is the loss of a horse haven't we all lost the homeland what is this crying over a horse now uncle koshro as you know he has the same thing it's no harm pay no attention to it kind of thing and it says that why are you crying at the loss of a horse we have lost our homeland and you are lamenting over the loss of a horse that may be all right for you a city dweller to say john byro said but what of my sari what good is a sari without a horse sari means the carriage now he said that you are a city dweller it might be fine with you but my sari or the carriage has become useless without the horse pay no attention to it my uncle koshro roared i walked 10 miles to get there john byro said I said that pay no attention to it. Let your carriage be alone. It doesn't need any horse. Now John Byro comes up with the second reason. He says that now what is the second reason of lamenting over the horse? That he has to walk every day. He has to walk ten miles to get to that place. Now Uncle Koshrov he again says, "You have legs." My Uncle Koshrov shouted, "Why are you worried?" worried? you have your own legs you can use them my left leg pains me the farmer says pay no attention to it my uncle koshrav road now even after that he says that see my left leg leg pains a lot now he said that again uncle koshrav says uh, says that pay no attention to it that horse cost me 60 dollars comes up with the next reason he says that it costed him 60 dollars the farmer said i spit on money My uncle Koshrov said, "Now it's enough to get on to a nerve of a person. Anyone would be angry." Right? He got up and stalked out of the house, slamming the screen door. He became so angry he got out of the house and he slammed. Slam means banged the door loudly and went out. My mother explained, "He has a gentle heart." She said, "It is simply that he is homesick and such a large man." He said that he is just homesick. he is a good man you shouldn't have said such words to him the farmer went away and i ran over to my cousin murad's house now it was very clear to murad as to aram that murad had actually stolen the horse a long time back so he ran over to his cousin's house he was sitting under a peach tree trying to repair the hurt wing of a young robin which could not fly he was talking to the bird now what was murad doing murad was trying to repair the hurt wing of a young robin which has not been able to fly right he was talking to the bird what is it he said the farmer john byro i said i visited our house he wants his horse you had it a month i want you to promise not to take it back un- until i learn to ride now he said that the farmer john byro had come to our house and he has said that his horse was stolen a month back so you have been taking the horse ride since a month and now i want you to promise that you would not return the horse until i learn to ride it will take you a year to uh, learn to ride now he says that listen it will take a year for you to learn how to ride we could keep the horse a year i said now he said Adam said Adam was very adamant now he said that then fine then I uh, we uh, we should keep the horse for a year then my cousin Murad leaped to his feet what he wrote are you inviting a member of the garolanian tri- family to steal he, he still he told he says that you are asking me to keep a horse for a year that means stealing you are inviting a member of the garolanian tribe to steal the horse must go back to its true owner when i said He said, "When, when, when do you intend to return the horse? In six months, at the latest." He says. Now he said that, "Okay, fine. We can keep the horse for six months, as if keeping the horse for a month means stealing, and keeping it for six months means does not mean stealing, right?" He had no intention to return the horse, actually, but at the same time, he does not even want to steal. 
He threw the bird into the air. The bird tried hard, almost fell twice, but at last flew away high and straight. The bird tried hard and finally it was able to fly away. Early every morning for two weeks, my cousin Murad and I took the horse out of the barn to the deserted vineyard where we were hiding it and rode it. And every morning the horse went, when it was my turn to ride alone, leaped over grape vines and small trees and threw me and ran away. So every morning for two weeks, they kept on taking these early morning rides. They would take the horse out of the barn, take it to the vineyard, desert. They, they would take it to, to that irrigation ditch and every time when it was Murad's turn, uh, the horse would, uh, would let it ride on its back and when Aram would ride on it, uh, he would make sure, the horse would make sure that he throws him, turn him down from his back. And he would leap over the grapevines and he would throw him from his back. Nevertheless, I hope in time to learn to ride the way my cousin Murad wrote. Now, he wished, but, but, but he was not disheartened. He kept on wishing that one day he would definitely ride as Murad, as Murad does. One morning on the way to Fitbajian's deserted vineyard, we ran into the farmer, John Byro, who was on his way to the town. Now, when one day when uh, they were going to Fitbajian's deserted vineyard to keep the horse, they they met John Byro face to face. Let me do the talking, my cousin Murad said. I have a way with farmers. Again, he says, he comes up with the same dialogue. I have a way with the ho with, with farmers. He said that I have a special way with the farmers, so let me talk with uh, Murad. Good morning. Uh, sorry, Murad said that he wants to talk with John Byro because he had a special way with farmers. Earlier, he said that he had a special way with horses. Now, he says that he had a special way with farmers. Good morning, John Byron, my cousin Murad said to the farmer. The farmer studied the horse eagerly. The farmer very eagerly studied the horse. He could recognize that he was his horse. Good morning, son of my friends, he said. What is the name of your heart? Horse? My heart, my cousin Murad said in our name. He said, is this your horse? What is the name of your horse? And he said, Murad said in our Marian that the name of the horse is my heart. A lovely name, John Vyra said, for a lovely horse. I could swear it is the horse that was stolen from me many weeks ago. May I look into its mouth? Vyra said that the name is nice, but I can swear that it was it is the horse which has been which had been stolen from me many weeks ago. Now for some particular sign he wanted to look into the mouth of the horse. Of course, Murad said. The farmer looked into its mouth, looked into the mouth of the horse. Tooth for tooth, he said. I could swear it is my horse. If I didn't know your parents, the fame of your family for honest years well known to me. Now he said that I could swear it is my horse. Even the signs inside the mouth match. Now he said that had it not been for his family, he, he would have thought uh, Araman Murad to have stolen his horses, uh, to have stolen his horse. But since he knew that uh, their, their family is famous for their honesty and integrity, he was quite sure that they can never steal the horse. Yet, the horse is a twin of my horse. Now, what assumption he makes now? What conclusion does he come upon? He says that it must be the twin of my horse. A suspicious man would believe his eyes instead of his heart. Good day, my young friend. Now he said that I'm not a suspicious man. Had I been a suspicious man, I, I would have believed in my eyes rather than my heart. But since I know I, I'm not a suspicious man and I believe in what my heart says, I won't believe my eyes. Good day, John Byro, my cousin Murad said. Early the following morning, we took the horse to John Byro's vineyard and put it in the barn. The dogs followed us around without making a sound. So early in the next morning, they took the horse from the vine vineyard and put it in the barn. Right, and the dog, they, they kept on moving around, both of them, and they did never make any sound. The dogs, I whispered to my cousin, Mura. I thought they would bark now. He said that, you know, the dogs, I thought that the dogs would bark now. But Murad once again said that he has a special way with the dogs. That afternoon, John Byro 
My cousin Murad put his, put his arms around the horse, pressed his nose into the horse's nose, patted it, and then it went to me. And, the, and then we went away. Now, Murad patted the horse, caressed it, and then finally they went away. That afternoon, John Byro came to our house in his survey and showed my mother the horse that had been stolen and returned. Now, he came in his survey and showed the narrator's mother, uh, that is Aram's mother, the horse that was stolen and then it is returned. I do not know what to think, he said. The horse is stronger than ever. Better tempered too. Now he said that I don't know what to say who did this, but now, now the horse has become stronger. Every day the horse was being fed with oats and alfalfa. Alpha. Definitely it would become stronger. And then he also said that it is also better tempered. Tempered. I thank God. My uncle Koshra, who was in the parlor, became irritated and shouted, Quiet, man, quiet. Your horse has been returned. Pay no attention to it. And thus the story ends here. Hope you understood what has been explained. Thank you.